Hey, Visionaries. Today, I am on the other side of the episode. So I am not interviewing today. I am being interviewed. And with that, I want to turn it over to my beautiful interviewer, who is my little sister and podcast producer and maid of honor. So hi, Ellie. Hi. Hi, Visionaries. I'm excited to be on the other side of the interview today instead of editing it, or I, I still will be editing it, but I'm interviewing Leah and Adam. Um, they are both entrepreneurs and they are about to get married one month from the day that this podcast episode will be released. So in honor of that, they wanted to do a Meet the Mister episode. Adam, would you like to introduce yourself? I would. Thank you so much, uh, Ellie. Hi, everyone. Hi, visionaries. My name is Adam. I met Leah back in 2014, so almost uh, five years from now. I am a lawyer that's uh, living in New York City, obviously, with, with Leah, mm -hmm. and a lawyer that transformed into an entrepreneur. And right now I'm working on opening a research um, firm, it's particularly in the investment side. Uh, I'm really excited about that. Thanks for doing this. Thank you so much for having me. We're getting married in a month. We are. <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting. Awesome. Okay, you guys, so I have 10 questions for you, and you can alternate between who answers first. Um, my first question for you is, what do you remember most about your first date? I go first. I remember us talking a lot about traveling, and I think when we met, you had just come back from your bar trip relatively mm -hmm. close to that, and you were telling me about how exciting it was and how much you like to travel with your family, and that was just not usually what I was talking to other guys at bars about. So that stood out to me. I don't exactly remember that, to be honest. But what I first remember is introducing myself and saying, oh, I have a sister named Leah as well, uh, which is, which is kind of cool. Leah is a very uh, rare name. Mm -hmm. And so that was a nice little <laughs> introduction. Beyond that, though, immediately what I recognized was Leah's positivity and just her, her drive and just her her overwhelming optimism towards life. And that's something that really interested me from the beginning. Thank you, that's so sweet. Of course. Beautiful. Okay, so question number two is, what moment do you remember about falling in love or knowing that they were the one? Adam, you can go first on this one. Okay, that's the good one. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try to avoid crying. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't think there was one distinct moment for me. Maybe there was for, for Leah. But as we got to know each other more in New York and got to go on more dates and got to really just have deep conversations about who we were and what we envisioned for the future, that's when I started realizing that this is the person that I could spend my, my entire life with and make those dreams come true. Have a, have a true partner in crime that would be at my side for, for eternity. And, wow. and yeah, like I said, I don't think there was a distinct moment. We had a really fun first trip. We went to Las Vegas, which is, which is not, you know, the most uh, glamorous so sort of romantic. romantic sort of trip. But I think it, it was a good representation just of, you know, our attitude toward life of willing to, to take chances on each other and just to have fun. And so that was, that was a great first trip with us and traveling with Leah and just being fully immersed in our relationship really made me start thinking, hey, this is someone that's such really interesting. That's so sweet. <laughs> I'm sure I don't have like, I'm sure there's so many mo one moments, but one that does come to mind. I hope I'm not saving this for like our vows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, I guess I can share it. It was really early on. It was like, I think it, I actually remember it was on my 23rd birthday. So I was pretty young. And I just remember at that point, we had been dating for a few months, I guess, not that long, but long enough to where I would, we would just kind of hang out at like our apartment instead of going out all the time and having to make, like we could just be normal. And I just remember one time like kind of laying on this couch because it was in your old apartment on this exact couch, kind of on your lap and I was just kind of half asleep and you were watching college basketball and <laughs> something came over me and was just like, I felt at, at home. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a I good, remember that moment. I think that's very, a good very, point. Very. It's not like, you know, the dates are fun and going out and going to restaurants, bars, whatever, but those normal moments when you feel extremely comfortable, that's, yeah. that's a terrific sign of, of a healthy relationship and promising for the future as it clearly was for us. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah. I love that. Awesome. Okay. Um, so what do you admire most about the other person? Good question. Um, so many things. Uh -huh. I think if I had to choose one trait I admire the most, it's 
how <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> how thoughtful you are and just how, uh, I guess I wish I had a better word for it, but you're just very considerate about so many things. And I just trust you so much. I know whenever you make a decision, you've really thought about it from different ways. I'm the opposite. I just like do things really quickly. And I don't know, I just really admire how, how careful you are. And I think it makes you just such a reliable person and uh, just a really good friend and a really good person to have in your life because you can just you know I always know what you mean when you say. Oh, really nice. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to cry. Yeah, that? but maybe maybe later. Uh, <laughs> do you? I would, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Adam. Uh, no, I, what were you going to say, Ellie? Yeah. I was just going to say, do you think that that thing that you admire most about him has changed as you have developed in your relationship, or do you think that that's like right off the bat the first thing that you've admired about him and it remains that way? Well, I think that that trait is what made me feel so close to him so quickly, just because he, I always felt like he was a trustworthy person and like that he just meant what he said and that I could let myself be vulnerable with him. But I think I've identified it more and fallen more in love with it because it it's my opposite, frankly. Not that I'm a trustworthy person, but he is definitely the, the he'll take his time with things. He's much more patient. He thinks about things a lot more big picture, whereas I'm very much like, let's take action. I want to get things done. Let's move, move, move. So I always loved it about him, but now I can see how I think we're, we're a very strong couple because we have both of those traits and we really balance each other out with it. Right. Um, so I've loved it about him, but now I love it about us too. I totally agree with, with that. So those traits, while they're positive, like you said, they do have some negative uh, attributes and the fact that we have the opposite uh, is, mm -hmm. is really helpful for both of us especially because we're entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and you know being a being an entrepreneur means you need to act quickly and make decisions quickly and move quickly and sometimes I struggle with that I'm a little bit more analytical like you said and so Leah Leah helps me uh, get <laughs> off my butt and take more action <laughs> which is always good um, but I would say my favorite attribute about Leah I'd go back to this again it's just her, her positivity and optimism um, I've never met some more positive, optimistic person than Leah. It's been that way since the beginning, and it's currently that, and I am confident it's going to be that in the future. And just like the energizer. You, you are like the energizer. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And I mean, it makes it so easy to be around you and to, to really do, do whatever we do, to go through our daily lives with each other. It's, it's so much more enjoyable with a positive, optimistic person person obviously and she's always there to pick me up if I'm feeling down um, she knows what to say in the right situations and yeah uh, that's, that's, that's what I would say oh, I love that. awesome <laughs> great answers you guys um okay Adam what was your favorite part of your bachelor party oh <laughs> so I just had my bachelor party um it'll be two weeks once this uh, airs two weeks ago um I wouldn't say a distinct moment again. Uh, it's it's more bigger picture. Just being with my my friends and family, and just being totally immersed in all of that love and support. Uh, it's we're we're all busy with our lives and our careers, and it's difficult sometimes for all of us to get together and be totally immersed in that experience. And so we had some late nights in Bourbon Street and the French Quarter, and those <laughs> those were a lot of fun. But just just hearing how everyone's doing and just sharing stories about the past and our yeah. hopes for the future, all that stuff. That's so fun. And Leah, what was your favorite part of your bachelorette party? <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, you can share too. Yeah, Ellie, you can have an answer for this. Uh, I mean, similar sentiments. The best part was just having like all the, the girls I love the most there together. And every, so many moments throughout the weekend, I had to stop and I just had like a pinch me moment because I just couldn't believe I'd gotten to a place where I have such good friends and family and you know, so many of the girls that were there are people that I met in New York. Um, you know, I moved here alone when I was 18 and it had always been my dream to come to New York City my whole life, as Ellie knows, and just realizing that I did that and it was scary and I didn't really know anyone and I really have built a life here that I always dreamed of. And so it was very, very full of gratitude. But I could pick one moment that, I mean, there were several moments that like I could cry laughing about how ridiculously funny they were, but just yesterday we were talking about how we met a bachelor party there. Um, and that night, everyone else was wearing black except me. And so we were very clearly a bachelor party. And this group of bachelors, there's like three of them and 12 of us, 
call us over and they like want to give me a shot and because I'm, you know, the bachelorette or whatever. So we go over there and when they give me the bottle, I then give it to every single other girl there. So all like 12 of us are drinking this guy's liquor and, <laughs> and we just were all cheering for each other. Every single girl as we went, we would just cheer on like, Ellie, Ellie. And then we'd go to the next person and Abby. And we did not tire and we did it for all 12 people. And by the end, we basically gave this guy an empty bottle of his vodka back. And then we're like, okay, you do one now. And he said his name, but no one was really listening. And so we were all chanting a different name for him. And we were saying like, Kevin, Gavin, Gavin. And no one knew, <laughs> no one knew his name. We all just said something that sounded like So we just said something that sounded like whatever he sounded like. And we were all chanting a different thing. It was probably like warm and, you know, empty vodka. Is so funny. So um, that was what <laughs> I loved that. That was hysterical. It was a very funny weekend. I think I love my favorite part was just meeting your friends are Leah has the most incredible friends. They are so much they are next level. They are next level friends, seriously. They they brought it. Like they, they did not go back. <laughs> yeah. They're they were relentless too. So it's <laughs> <laughs> a good word. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Leah, what has been your favorite part of wedding planning so far? Oh. Um I've, I mean, I, I would say that I'd like 90% I've loved it. It's been just so fun to plan the, a wedding that I've, you know, like I've wanted to get married in New York. That's always where I saw myself getting married. So seeing it happen is a big dream come true. I think specifically some of the funnest things to plan have been, I loved dress shopping and finding my wedding dress. That was really fun. Um, my bachelorette party was a ton of fun. Uh, I'm such a sucker for all the sentimental stuff. So even like asking my bridesmaids, and, you know, um, thinking about what we're going to say to each other and just thinking about gifts I can give to family and stuff, that stuff, I could do that kind of stuff all day. Like, you should have seen me making our guest book. It was like a whole, a whole thing. I was so into it just because I could put little pictures of us and stuff in. So anything sentimental has been a lot of fun for me. Um, and I loved venue touring because mm. we could go to see all the New York venues and hotels. Yeah. Well, I'd say the cake tasting number one. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's a really good cake. It's going to be awesome. Um, but I would echo what you said, just seeing our vision for, for our wedding day turn into a reality here. We've got about one month to go. And back when I proposed uh, last July, we almost immediately started talking about what it would look like. We didn't know when it would happen, but mm -hmm. we started throwing some ideas together saying, oh, you know, it's going to be in New York. We, Leah mentioned this hotel that she mm -hmm. really wanted to get married at. So we started thinking about that. And, and now it's, it's actually happening. And along with that, I, I just gave so much credit to event planners who, who do this for a living because you know, <laughs> it's not the easiest thing. There are so many moving parts. And some of these event planners are just awesome at coordinating all this stuff. So I have a newfound respect for, for planning a, a major event. Also, the best part has been falling more in love with each other. And I think yeah. that you kind of knew, you know, we had dated, we were obviously very close before we got engaged and we talked about getting married. I didn't know how different it would feel when we got engaged. I didn't like, I guess it makes sense, but it's just not something I really thought about. I thought it would just be so natural and it was, but I still feel like the last year has just been completely different. I mean, it has a big different feeling and I've loved it, I feel like. It's exciting now to just, I can't even imagine what it's gonna actually feel like to be married because I couldn't have even imagined what it actually feels like to be engaged. So I thought that's yeah. been really good. And I wouldn't wanna give like personal advice to people on how long they should be engaged for, but we, so it's gonna be about a year and three months, something like that? Yeah, like 14, and 15 months. I think it's, it's the perfect amount of time, maybe more or less a couple months if you wanna adjust that. But it's been really nice because we had a lot of time to plan our wedding, not only that, but just to, to enjoy our time as fiance. It's a really special time and we never get it back. That's true. Yeah, it's a great period of time, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Okay, so Adam, what has been the hardest, <laughs> most, or m most unexpected part of the wedding planning? Um, maybe just the degree of all the moving parts that <laughs> are involved uh, organizing everything. And it's, there's nothing bad, there's nothing wrong about it. It's just a part of the wedding process. And Right. To be honest, I think we've improved quite a bit since mm -hmm. the beginning. Um, <laughs> I didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know what we were doing, but again, that's, that's a characteristic of being an entrepreneur. You kind of 
to start with some project or task. You don't know how it's going to happen or work out and you just figure it out as you go along. And I think we've gotten better at that. But in the beginning, it, it was a little overwhelming to think, all right, we've got to do this and this and this. There are so many items in our to-do to -do list and there still are, but mm -hmm. there are a lot of good resources out there that help us along. The, the NOT has been really good. And I don't know if I can endorse particular products on this uh, it's cool. podcast. <laughs> we should have but, um, <laughs> but the NOT has been really good and there have been a lot of other resources that have helped. But but just logistically, it's, it's been a challenge, but not a bad challenge, obviously. A good challenge. Okay. Awesome. I think the unexpected hard part is just trying to please everyone which you can't do mm -hmm. and i think that one of the things that has saved us from from me going totally bridezilla i've had plenty of moments <laughs> but from going completely crazy is that we're having a smaller wedding so we don't have to take into consideration that that many people but on the flip side because it is smaller you do kind of talk to everyone about your wedding that's coming throughout the year and everyone has an opinion about something and you to do feel somewhat obligated to take it under consideration because it is so small. And for us, we're so blessed that we're very close with our immediate families and we're close with each other's immediate families. So we really do care, you know, what they think and how things are done. And we want to take into consideration any family traditions, how they're feeling. You know, I've shared on this podcast that my dad passed away last year. And so planning a fatherless wedding has had like a lot of challenges. Um, so I think it's just managing all those, you know, you're, it's really it's self-imposed stress because everyone knows you can't please everyone. No one's expecting you to please everyone, but you do put that pressure on yourself where you want everyone to be happy and you want everyone to have a good time and you don't want to ever be the one who's ruffling any feathers within your family or the, uh, you know, sensitive part of a family dynamic. So. I think that's been a challenge and something I honestly didn't really expect that much because we love everyone coming to our wedding mm -hmm. and we know that they love us. And I just like, didn't think that we're not from one of, you know, we're not from families that have a whole lot of like history of drama. So, and, and this hasn't been all that dramatic. It's really just about how many people you're trying to consider and how to juggle all those considerations when you're doing seemingly small things like picking up food yeah. <laughs> or like what you're going to mm -hmm. say and, you know, things like that. So I think that that's been the most stressful part of it all. Um, but I got some really good advice that said that, you know, you have to first and foremost, take into consideration what your guests absolutely need. Like, do they have transportation? Are, is there food and water? Is there drinks available? Like basic needs of how they're going to survive a day long festivity with you. But then when it comes to wants, only focus on you too, because this is your day. Everyone's going to have preferences about that. And it's easier said than done, but that rule of thumb, just help me come back to the fact that this is our wedding and mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't, you know, take into other consideration, take into consideration other people that much. Yeah, and it's important to keep the bigger picture in mind too, because right. if you have a family member or friend um, who may not like a particular dish that you may be serving or something like that, it's not going to ruin their entire experience. They're not going to think five years down the road, hmm, that wedding wasn't that great because I didn't like the entree. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just not going to happen. So it's <laughs> right. important to keep the, the bigger picture in mind. Right. It's just like you're spending so much money and so much time on this one day that the stakes feel high. It just is what it is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I was about to ask you guys, do you have a piece of advice to share for any people about to plan their wedding? And you guys just answered it perfectly with a perfect piece of advice from both of you. Well, I think and I want to add a little to that because we've got some good advice that's helped us a lot that we want to pass on. Like one of the things, especially over the last few months, because in the end it gets really crazy. We've been, I think, pretty good about having date nights where we don't talk about our wedding. Mm -hmm. And that's really nice because it just gets back to like, you know, at some point you feel like all this spare time you spend with each other is doing your wedding planning. So that was a good piece of advice. And um, I mean, I know it's very conventional advice, but just remembering, you know, like you said, the big picture and staying grateful for that. But I think we've done a really good, pretty good job of that because we decided when we got engaged that if we ever saw the other get stressed, we'd try to pull them out and be like, we're getting married this is a blessing you know time. people yeah. would kill the fair wedding like this is not a guarantee and so we needed to that was really important to remember right yeah just as far as like investments that you should make i i think i'd speak for you saying that getting a planner is probably a, a must we were thinking that we would maybe try to do all the heavy lifting or a lot of the heavy lifting by ourselves and as the date is getting closer and closer you just realize that's an impossible <laughs> task it's not going to happen. We were like, so, yeah, we cannot do this anymore. Yeah, 
I mean, you can adjust on budget or cost depending on your situation, but a planner, I would say is, is almost a requirement. Right. Especially because you both are entrepreneurs and have a full work day. It's not yeah. like you're lollygagging around planning your oh, wedding, yeah. nothing else to do. Right. Yeah. We, it's been really hard juggling both, but it's our choice. Mm -hmm. Right. Awesome. Okay. And so I believe it's Adam's turn. What are you most excited about for your wedding day? Hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, that's a big question. Well, <laughs> like a moment. Yeah, it would be, it's, hard, it's hard to narrow it right. down. But if, if, I, if I had to pick onto the head, I'd probably say just her walking down the aisle. Uh, just seeing her in her dress and fully drinking in the moment of not only seeing her, but all of our friends and family just uh, looking at, at us and you know, it's, it's a moment that obviously you'll, you'll never forget, but I think it's easy to say and just the magnitude of it is much more intense when you're at the altar. So that's undoubtedly going to be awesome and life changing and awesome. <laughs> life changing and something I'll never forget. So beyond that, just, just the whole day, um, even the reception is going to be great. Um, our first dance, all that stuff. Do you think you're going to like my dress? I know I like her dress. Yeah, of course. You will. You will. <laughs> we've, we've kept it a secret for this long. It's been what a year. Yeah. And so it's been pretty good. Yeah, and we're not doing a first look. Not doing the first look. The first look we're is not doing one. Mm -hmm. Nope, we're not. So it'll be full surprise at the yeah. old. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. My uh, moment is the same. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm most excited for. But I am going to like wail. <laughs> I don't know how people do it. I feel like I'm going to be so emotional and obviously happy but yeah I just overwhelmed seeing everyone there gathered mm -hmm. for us like I don't you know it's the only day in your life really where everyone is there to celebrate the two of you and that you love that much are like in one room and just seeing you at the other end it's, mm -hmm. it's gonna be beautiful so a like, lot of love a lot of love, a lot of love yeah. in the air yeah I'm so excited talking about it's making me excited <laughs> I'm excited for getting ready with you guys. That's like something that I'm really looking forward to. I spent a lot of time picking out the hotel room because it was important to me mm -hmm. <laughs> that we liked getting ready there and our first dance, which hopefully we don't mess up. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. I'm really excited to hear the song that you've always wanted to walk down the aisle to or for the last few yeah. years. Why haven't you listened to it? I have. Oh. No, I'm excited to like actually watch you walk down and then everyone walk down to it. You've played I listen to it like years. every day when I go on my way to the gym, I'll listen to it and I see it all in my head and maybe I've been get crying on my way to the gym. <laughs> I know, I'm excited for it because like you've been anticipating this song to be played at your wedding for so long. I'm excited for it to actually happen. Yeah, me too. I'm so grateful. Shout out to our pianist, he knows me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put our pianist's yeah, well, name in the yeah. show notes because yeah. the father, the, or no, not the father, but the musician at our church is spending around 10 hours learning this piano heavy song so I can walk down the aisle to it. Awesome. Side note, when Leah was growing up, she wanted to walk down the aisle to Usher. It's true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought I was going to marry him and so I thought I was going to walk down the aisle to Which Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, sure. Uh, amazing. Okay, so you're both entrepreneurs. What's, what is it like in your relationship to support each other with that while you're both planning your wedding and about to embark on this journey together? I think we have just accepted that there is no balance really <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's actually been helpful because it just is what it is. And we're not making ourselves wrong for working late on the weekends or, you know, um, working at night or whatever, or even sometimes not even eating dinner as much together because we have to keep working. But then on the flip side, we're able to just be like, you know what, I need to walk away. Let's go have a beer and we can do that too whenever. And so we've just really tried to be patient with each other and listen to what the other needs in that moment uh, because it is so much on both ends. And there have been moments where I personally, I don't know about you, but I personally have wanted to ease up on my work for a little during this time. But I know that in my heart and in my business is goals that's not really in service to it mm -hmm. and I would be it what's really important to me is to get married and come out on the other side a wife <laughs> which is crazy <laughs> that you know really feels like my business is exactly where I want it to be and that is really proud of the direction it's going in because that 
my, my wedding's not my business. It's, it's a day. And so I really didn't want to drop the momentum on that. Um, so I just try to remember that in the moments that I feel like I haven't had a day off in months or, you know, there is no end in sight that it's in service to our marriage and the future that we're having to just hold tight during this time. Um, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I did echo everything you said and just keeping perspective too. Uh, it's, it's easy to get stuck in the weeds with, with all the planning and logistics, not only the wedding, but our own businesses. But Leah, you've told me more than once that it's, it's important to remember that it's a privilege to, to be experiencing all of this. It's a privilege to be together, to get married. It's a privilege to be an entrepreneur, even with, with all those challenges on that side. And so keeping perspective and just really appreciating where we are in life is just very important. And, mm -hmm. and we've, we've done a good job with that, I think. Yeah, and we just have to remind each other. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why it's helpful. Yeah, we can remind it. I think we also have gotten to a place where some of the wedding stuff, it's pretty easy to just like laugh at it because it's just so ridiculous, the sheer magnitude of like things we have to do and the questions that we're getting about things that we don't care about. And so we found humor in it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. like, we'll get an email and we'll both just crack up because we're like, this, like, this can't be real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The detail that goes into it has to be funny at some point. <laughs> exactly. You, got, you can't take it too seriously or you'll drive yourself nuts. <laughs> um, okay, Leah, I'll edit this out. But for number nine, it says, what are you most about in your relationship? What it, what oh, I'm sorry. I realized after I sent that to you, I forgot to send the word and then I um, didn't follow up with you. But I, my, what I meant was proud. Mm. Okay. What are you most proud of in your relationship? Part yeah. of the relationship itself. Yeah. Or, oh, okay. And if you, yeah, whatever that is. Okay. All right. I'll cut that all out. I was just making sure. Okay. And is it is it Adam's No, it's Leah's turn. I think it's my turn, but I don't have an answer. No, it actually was my turn. <laughs> Do you want me to go first? Are you yeah, go ahead. About it? Go ahead. I think. <laughs> well, I need to come on the spot. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's Leah's turn. Yes. Yeah. No, it's Adam's turn. All right. I'll, I'll do it. Is whatever you want to do. Okay. Okay, so what are you most proud of? Wait, I'm sorry, I'm gonna re-say that. Adam, what are you most proud of in your relationship? Um, well, there are so many things. Um, I just, one, one thing is the fact that we push each other, that we, we don't let each other stagnate, whether that's in our career or in our relationship. Um, it's easy to, to settle for certain things or let inertia take its course. Um, just, just with with everything, and and Leah, you know, sometimes I don't necessarily want to hear it, but but she pushes, but she pushes me, and she challenges me to to take it to the next level, to keep advancing, um, both our our careers and relationship, and I, I hope I do the same for her. Mm, and definitely, I think it's very important because otherwise, like, what, what, what's the point, right? Mm -hmm. We just need to. Yeah, we like really take each other's dreams seriously. Mm -hmm. I feel like we always have, and yeah, so we, we, I buy into hers, and she buys into mine. Yeah. I mean, it's not just like for fun to talk about to us. Yeah. I think I talked about this at our wedding shower over the summer, but I think what I'm most proud of is that, um, <laughs> I'm going to cry just like I did at our wedding shower, that our relationship has just always, it's just never been a reflection about the other things that have gone on in our lives. And what I said at our wedding shower was that when we got engaged, my first bridezilla moment, because I have many, was that I was like reading other people's vows and, and looking at, you know, wedding blog posts and watching wedding videos to try to like get inspired for what we wanted to do for ours. And I remember commonly hearing people say things at the altar that were just sort of like, it was a long winding road to get here, but we fought through it. Or like, you know, we, we've broken up and gotten back together and broken up and gotten back together. In other words, they just expressed a lot of sort of like a dramatic, but, but romantic, you know, but a, kind of like a no, novella in their relationship to where they got. And I remember being like, oh my God, we've never fought. What if, <laughs> like, what if we're not ready to get married? What, or I don't know. I, it was ridiculous in hindsight, but um, that's like just how much I couldn't think of any really hardship our relationship had gone through. And I thought, well, life's going to have a lot of challenges. What if you know, what if we just haven't really dealt with them? But obviously in like a second, I realized that that was so not true because during our relationship, when we met, Adam was working at a law firm. I was a paralegal. I was studying for the LSAT. I hadn't even thought of Urban 20 something. He was, like I said, working at a law firm. So in the course of our relationship, we both quit our jobs, which is hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
you know, I declined my law school acceptances. I went to Asia by myself for a little while. So we were long distance for a little while. Um, we've moved, which was not easy. When I made Adam paint our entire apartment. <laughs> Don't recommend doing that on your first apartment living together. And obviously I lost my dad suddenly, which was the worst moment ever. And, the, you know, hopefully the worst thing that ever happens to me. And so I'm really proud that our relationship never took a toll from any of that. And I feel like our relationship has always grown and strengthened and, you know, gone up, I guess is kind of the phrase I'm looking for, the way it would have, even if we weren't facing those obstacles, it really never was impacted by those. Yeah. And I think that that just is something that I'm really proud of in both of us and how we are. And um, I just feel like it's a really great foundation to get married from because I think we know how to keep our personal lives or the things going on outside of not between us. And we're empathetic as well. We intuitively understand what each other is feeling. I think at this point, it's fair to say. Yeah, um, yeah. We can kind of like not talk about feelings and still know what the yeah. others are feeling. So mm -hmm. kind of just go through it all together now. Amazing. I love that. Um, okay, so last question. Leah, what is one thing that you want to make sure Adam knows? <laughs> <laughs> very emotional. <laughs> he knows <laughs> another guy. <laughs> um, I should, <laughs> hang on, I need a minute. <laughs> Take your time. You edit this part out, Ellie. Yes, yes. <laughs> Adam can answer first if you'd rather. No, I can do it. I just need to pull it together. <laughs> I can't believe I'm getting married. Yeah. I can't either. I like how you guys are wearing black and white right now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it was coincidence. I didn't really fun. plan it. Oh, really? You didn't plan it? No. Uh -huh. Okay, can you ask me again? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Leah, what is one thing that you want to make sure Adam knows? I just want you to know how proud I am of you and that I just can't think of someone who would be a better father and husband than you and how much you impress me and how much I look up to you still after all these years and how much you just are so consistently the best person I know. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you for choosing me. Aw, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adam's tears. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I just want to let you know how, how humbled I am that you decided first to, to date me and to be with me <laughs> and, and to be my, my girlfriend and fiance and wife. And the journey has just been unbelievable to this point and we're, we're just getting started. I'm so excited for the future. I, couldn't be luckier to have such a thoughtful, beautiful, and just, just positive wife. And, and I'm just so excited Aww. for the future. Thanks. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Any other questions for us, Al? I don't think so. I think you guys are a great role model for me and for Abby and for anyone Aww. who's looking up to uh, a couple. And yeah, you guys definitely provide a lot of insight and I'm so excited for you guys to get married. <laughs> and um, yeah, I have loved doing this interview. Thank you for letting me do it. Thanks for doing this thanks, with Ali. us. And thanks everyone for listening to yeah, this getting you. emotional. <laughs> when I thought about this, I didn't really think that I'd be like this emotional, but I guess I am because it's happening in a month. Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, it's coming up hot. <laughs> all right, well, thank you guys all for tuning in and thank you, Ellie, for doing this and thanks for being on my thank podcast. You. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.